Hi, I am Julia. Ben and I will be talking about World Age. I will speak and Ben will show. World Age is a mechanism that the Julia language uses to simplify the interaction between eval and compiler optimizations. Like many other dynamic languages, Julia provides a way to dynamically modify running program using eval. This poses a challenge to its JIT compiler. By temporarily restricting the effects of eval on function definitions, Julia is able to simplify the compiler implementation, achieve good performance, and provide predictable program behavior. If necessary, it is possible to opt in for the traditional semantics of eval to gain full flexibility by explicitly giving up the performance. However, we found that to be uncommon in practice. In what follows, we will describe the world age mechanism as implemented in Julia, talk about the key intuition behind it formalization, and how can it simplify compiler optimizations. But first, let's recall what is eval. Eval construct is common for dynamic programming languages. Usually, it takes some representation of a program, such as an abstract syntax tree or a string, and evaluates it, as shown here. Furthermore, eval can dynamically alter the running program by changing its function definitions. For instance, consider this program. We will use it as a running example throughout the presentation. Here, we define function sum3, which returns the sum of its three parameters, a, b, and c. In the middle of sum3, eval redefines the addition function. After defining sum3, we call it with arguments 1, 2, and 3. What is the result of this call? With the traditional semantics of eval, first 1 plus 2 returns 3, then eval fires, and finally, 3 plus 3 returns 3 according to the new definition of plus. In Julia, however, the result is quite different. In Julia, the first call to sum 3 runs as if eval didn't happen at all, and returns 6, the actual sum of 1, 2, and 3. But the second call to sum 3 returns 1. Hmm, why is that? It's because the eval from the first call to sum 3 appears to take effect only after sum 3 returns to the top level. Similarly to some other languages, eval in Julia executes in the top-level environment, redefining plus globally. Thus, the second call to sum3 uses the new definition of plus, causing sum3 to return its first argument. To understand how exactly that works, we will need a little more information about Julia internals. In Julia, all function definitions processed during the program execution are stored in a global method table. The term method here refers to a single definition. There is also a global counter called world age, which keeps track of the number of method definitions. This counter increments with every definition, and its new value gets stored in the method table along with the method, signifying its birth age. We will see shortly how that plays out in the semantics of eval. Let's look at our running example again. Let the method table already contain some standard methods, such as plus. When the definition of sum3 is about to be processed, world age is equal to 10. So, processing the definition, we increment the world age counter and store sum3 in the method table with a birth age of 11. Next, we call sum3 from the top level. When processing a top level call, we remember the current value of the world age, in this case 11. This value is then used to resolve all nested calls within the top level one, namely, only methods that were born by the beginning of the top-level call are visible within it. In this example, visible methods have the maximum birth age of 11. When we get to a plus b, there is only one definition of plus, so we use it. Then, eval executes and redefines addition. This, in turn, increments world age, and the new definition of plus gets stored in the method table with a birth age of 12. However, this new definition is too new to be called an AB plus C. Therefore, the second call to plus resolves to the original definition, and sum3 returns 6, the actual sum of 1, 2, and 3. But once the first call to sum3 is completed, the second call starts at world age 12, where the new definition of plus is now visible. Therefore, A plus B dispatches to this latest definition. Then, once again, eval adds a definition of plus to the table. As this new definition is too new for a, b plus c, both calls to plus dispatch to the definition born at age 12. Thus, the second call to sum3 returns 1. As you might have noticed, 
With the world age semantics, multiple calls to the same function within a top-level call always resolve to the same definition, regardless of the presence or position of eval. Function definitions that are dynamically introduced by eval become visible at well-defined points between top-level calls. Thus, regardless of eval, the semantics of functions is stable during a top-level computation, which can simplify reasoning about programs. Furthermore, world age simplifies logic related to compiler optimizations. Imagine that instead of plus, some free calls an expensive computation f, which can be optimized. Because of the world age semantics, we know that in this top level call to some free, f is guaranteed to resolve to its original definition. Even if f is redefined in eval, we know that the new method will not be called immediately. Therefore, both calls to f within some free can safely dispatch to the optimized version of f. Note that Julia will never need to de-optimize the second call to f on the fly, which would be the case with the traditional semantics of eval. In the paper, we define a formal model of the world age semantics and prove that in this semantics, the discussed optimization is indeed correct. Optimizing function calls is critical for the performance of Julia. Because Julia is a language with multiple dispatch, there can be hundreds of methods for the same function. For example, there are 184 versions of addition in the standard library. In our running example, addition is called twice. When sum3 is called with integer arguments, a plus b is known to dispatch to the built-in integer addition. Therefore, we can avoid dynamic dispatch in plus and inline it. And because of the world age, in spite of calling eval in sum3, the second call to plus in a, b plus c can be inlined as well. This mechanism, inlining based on type specialization, enabled by world age, provides much of Julia's performance. Regular calls, such as calls to plus in our example, are often optimized and thus run fast. In the case of sum3, the execution time is dominated by the intermediate call to eval, which defines a new function. But what if the world age semantics is too restrictive, and one really does need to call the newly defined method? There are two ways to do that. The first one is to use eval again to make the call. Eval always runs in the latest world age and thus has full access to the method table, including the new definition of plus. However, the code executed by eval is not optimized, so it can be much slower than the regular call. The second way is to use invoke latest, a special function that has access to the newest definitions. Using invoke latest is still slower than the regular call, but it is faster than eval. However, based on our corpus analysis, bypassing world age is relatively uncommon in practice. We statically analyzed all registered Julia packages, about 4,000, and found that more than two-thirds of the packages use neither eval nor invoke latest in any capacity. Only a few use invoke latest, and although about one-third of the packages do use eval, this happens for various reasons. Most of them are not related to bypassing world age. For instance, one popular programming pattern is the generation of boilerplate code. In this example, eval is used for metaprogramming to define new methods in the gen function. Gen itself is called at the top level. Thus, immediately after its completion, the rest of the code has full access to the newly evolved methods. In such a program, the temporary restriction imposed by the world age is unnoticeable. More programming patterns are described in the paper. By a conservative estimate based on our static analysis, about 4-9% to of Julia packages might be bypassing world age. This suggests that world age provides a practical trade-off between flexibility, performance, and compiler complexity. Finally, let's talk about Juliet, our formalization of the world age semantics and function call optimizations, which are described in the paper. The key idea behind the formalization is that the explicit world age counter as implemented in Julia is only an implementation detail. In Juliet, we instead operate with explicit method tables that capture visible methods. Additionally, we also replace eval with a simpler global evaluation construct, because top-level evaluation is the only aspect of eval that is relevant to the world age. Let's compare how Julia and Juliet deal with the visible methods. In Julia, we have two different execution contexts, the top level, global, which is the same as eval, or within a function body, local. From the top level, 
be it at the REPL or as the argument to eval, we can call any method within the method table. From inside of a function, visible methods are restricted to those older than the local world age, in this example, 11. In Juliet, top-level expressions are contained within a global evaluation construct. Function calls within this construct can dispatch to any method in the global method table. Note that unlike Julia, Juliet does not need to keep track of the birth age of methods. Evaluation within a function is represented by a local evaluation construct. The local table captures the state of the global table at some point in the execution, and it never changes afterwards. Once created, local tables are immutable and independent of the method definitions that might be added later to the global table. Function calls within the local evaluation construct may only dispatch to the local table. Juliet evaluation happens between configurations that consist of two components, the global method table and an expression. Each step of the dynamic semantics takes a configuration and produces a new one, potentially modifying the global method table as well as the expression. Evaluating a function call always leaves the global method table unchanged. However, beyond this, the semantics of function calls depends on the execution context of the call. A call from the global context should have full access to the defined methods. We model this by taking the current global table and copying it into the local context. Then, at the next step, the call will be resolved as a local call using the up-to-date local table. The actual call resolution always happens from the local context. The resolution begins by determining the argument types of the call. Then, for the given method name and argument types, it looks up the correct method in the local method table. If this lookup succeeds, the call steps to the appropriate method body with substituted arguments, inside of the same local evaluation context we started with. This guarantees that all nested calls will be also resolved in the same context. To conclude, let's talk about optimizations. Because global evaluation does not affect local method tables, it is safe to optimize methods within those tables, as well as local function calls. For example, consider a local call to SUM3 within table M, which contains integer addition and SUM3 itself. When SUM3 is called with integer arguments, like in the example, we know that both calls to PLUS have to be dispatched to the integer addition. Therefore, if SUM3 is specialized for integer arguments, as shown in table M', prime, it is safe to inline both nested calls to PLUS. Furthermore, the original call to generic SUM3 can be replaced by a call to its optimized, specialized version within the optimized table. So, to recap, world age is the alternative semantics of eval. It is used by the Julia language to simplify the interaction between compiler optimizations and dynamic program modification that is possible using eval. With world age, Julia is able to achieve good performance, simplify compiler implementation, and enable predictable program behavior. The world age semantics could be applied to programming languages other than Julia. It does not rely on any feature specific to Julia, nor is the choice of where methods become visible fundamental to the semantics. In the paper, we describe the world age mechanism and provide its first formal account in the calculus called Juliet. We consider several optimizations related to method dispatch and show their correctness using explicit method tables. More information about world agent practice, program and patterns related to eval and optimizations can be found in our paper.